committee who has been working very diligently uh, on the aquatic center as well as looking at other other sports as well. And I'd like to thank, uh, thank you, Miss Isby, for the work that you have done and Felicia and your committee. I know that y'all have taken some uh, trips and looked at some other facilities and put in a lot of hours on this. So uh, again, thank you for all you've done. Uh, this time I'll turn it over to you, Miss Isby. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, just want to acknowledge my committee. Um, my committee consists of Karen Ledbetter, Craig Connor, Jeff Turnage, Denise Perry, Bill Maynard, Donna Townsend, Jenny, Ta Jenny Davis, Teresa Little, and Melissa Troop. And um, of course, the backbone has been um, our ladies here of City Hall, which consists of Felicia, Shawana, and Jamie. And then of course, we had Trey Price along with Steve Ibbotson with us on the benchmarking trips and then also all of our meetings. Uh, Felicia has prepared for each of you at your stations kind of an overview of um, what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, we are looking at a community center that will house an, aqua an aquatic center and we're looking at the bonds that could generate up to 25 million for the parks recreation facility projects. Uh, we are also looking at, in addition to that being our top priority, if funding is available, we'll also be looking at um, a new soccer facility, indoor tennis facility, a community center um, with volleyball, basketball, pickleball, the renovation of the McGee Center and the Don Owen Center, also a mountain bike park and additional park amenities. Uh, what you have in your packet is just some colorful pictures uh, as far as the aquatics recreational facilities. And um, of course, there was a comprehensive study to evaluate the, the feasibility of a new aquatic center in July of 2016, and it was also updated in 2021. And in looking at that information from the study, it indicates that there was 80.4% of the responses came back from households with three or more people. Um, this suggests that a majority of respondents were households with children, and the characteristics of the community were also identifying in the demographics. The major respondents, we had 81.7% that favored a combination of indoor and outdoor facilities. The majority of the respondents currently use an outdoor pool at least five or more times a year. Uh, the majority of the respondents, which was 66.8, currently use an indoor pool less than five times a year. The availability of an indoor pool may be a factor to the relative low usage when compared to the usage to an outdoor pool. And a lot of that's coupled with the fact that a lot of neighbors have pools at their home that they can utilize, so um, that had a lot to do, I think, with those numbers. But the majority of the respondents, which was 69.4, stated that they're willing to travel more than 10 minutes to an outdoor, for, outdoor facility. And then the majority of the respondents stated that they are willing to travel more than 10 minutes to an indoor facility. Uh, leisure and recreation swimming is the priority of vast, the vast majority of the respondents, and that's 87.2%. The second uh, was usage is exercise. What we are looking at for the potential location of the community center that will house the aquatics is the South German Lane slash Fav, Favre Lane, however you choose to pronounce it. That is land that the city currently owns. Um, it's a little over uh, 93 acres, I believe. Out of that 93 acres, there's only 19 due to it being in the floodway and then also due to power lines being run that can actually be utilized for a building. Of course, you can still build trails, do parking lots, things like that in that area, but as far as the actual uh, 
area to build in. We're talking basically 19 acres. And there are several different pictures here looking at a master plan at different ways that you could set up the um, outdoor aquatic center, uh, different pavilions, parking lot scenarios, and different things of that nature. The first facility that we benchmark was the Aquatic Center in Pine Bluff, and that is strictly indoors. Um, that was an estimated 12 million when they built that, and that opened in 2019. Uh, it does have a small indoor play area. It does have the competition pool with eight lanes. It has a water playground, a slide, that extends outside, but it's just the exterior of it that's on the outside and you get on the slide and you go through the outside tunnels and then you come back in and land on the inside. Um, there are several pictures there. When we talked to them at Pine Bluff, the new manager had just been there. I think that was his seventh day. He moved from El Dorado and um, he said that typically with them, they usually have about $40,000 a year just in sponsorships. And the things that they had at Pine Bluff, um, he said he definitely would suggest eight lanes for competition swimming. He also said that you would need a ramp for a therapy pool and then also suggested having a certified pool operator on staff. He did take us into the room where they have all of the, trying to think of the best term to use, all of the mechanics to operate the pools. And it was very high tech um, and showed us several things to do and not do, but he said it was very important to make sure that you did have a certified pool operator on staff um, to operate the pool. We, after we went to Pine Bluff, uh, we took another trip the following week or so, and we went to Clarksville, and I think Theo had mentioned Clarksville previously. Uh, Clarksville, their estimated construction of theirs was 10 million. It was both an indoor and outdoor facility, approximate, approximately 11 acres. What they did in Clarksville is they built it by their community center. So it was, you could basically go from the pool and walk, walk right over to the community center. So they were there together. Theirs opened in 2014, and of course the community center had the basketball and also the racquetball, and they had the track similar to what we have at Don Owen and the McGee Center that people can walk on. The things that Clarkville said is they liked having it next, having the community center next door. Um, they said they would encourage eight lanes for competition, swimming, and then also having a separate pump system. They said what that does is it allows you to, particularly outdoors, if one area is messing up, then you can turn that particular area off rather than having to turn everything off. So having the separate pump systems. So we left Clarksville and we went on to Rogers, which Rogers is strictly a complete outside aquatic center. Uh, it was a very, very good setup. They had it laid out such that they had the areas for like very small children separated completely from some of the other areas that older children may utilize or adults may utilize. They had a combination of many things. As you can see here, they had the slides, they had the Lazy River, but again, everything that they had was completely outside. Um, they said that the one things, the things that they would have done is they suggested uh, plenty of storage space. They didn't have enough of that um, because you do have to store all of the chairs and things like that. They also said a larger concession area and also a larger area for staff. Uh, they also had the separate 
pump system, which he was able to turn on like the little kid area splash pad for us to look at and nothing else there at the facility was on. And like I said, they also had separate areas for the different age groups, which made it very nice. So if you were a mother bringing your young children, you could sit right there where the young children were. If you had older children, they could do the lazy river and some of the climbing and things for the older ages. Then on that Saturday, we went to Bentonville. Uh, Bentonville, I think, probably was the most impressive, but I think it was because of a lot of the amenities that they had. Um, theirs was indoor as well. When you pull into Bentonville, we had Melissa Troop with us and her children are competitive swimmers and they have actually been to Bentonville and used that facility for competitive uh, swimming but when you pull into the center it just says Bentonville Community Center so when you walk in you get the complete feel of a community center you check in uh, they gave us a tour of the different areas that they have it was very unique with the fact that they had an area that was just kind of a mini library and they had done that in conjunction with the local library so you could come into this library and check out books. You could, it was kind of like a satellite library. So it was easier for people who lived in this area to check out library books, return library books, things of that nature, than to have to go further to the actual library. They also had uh, what they call uh, a senior room and are active adults. So it was a room that they utilized. They said a lot of times what people would do is they would come in and have card games. Uh, they had books for adults in that area. So just kind of a common area. They also had some machines that they could use to check their body weights, things of that nature. So basically they called it their active adult room. Um, they also, Bentonville was basically built on two levels, which I think was good because, you know, from an architect standpoint, you probably are going to do better as far as your cost building up as versus building out. They had several multi-purpose rooms. They showed us one of the multi-purpose rooms and it was a room that they utilized for different type things. They did like arts and crafts in there where the young people could come in, they could do an arts and crafts class. Uh, they did CPR class that the firemen did for people to get their CPR certification. They also utilized this classroom to do babysitting techniques to teach people to do babysitting, so very community oriented. Um, they also took us to several other rooms that they had. They even had a room set up to do their council meetings there. They had probably more rooms than I think we would utilize due to the fact that we have our expo center even such that people could rent the different rooms. They had one that was even set up that was very large that you could even do like family reunions, things of that nature. They had the tables available the dishes, everything, um, even a commercial kitchen that could be utilized. They also had um, downstairs, they had a room that they used kind of as an exercise room. In fact, they had a jazzercise class that was going on. Uh, their pool area, you walked into the pool area, and again, it was all indoor, but you walked in, they had a little splash pad area for kids to play in, and then they had the open swimming pool. In fact, they had someone in there, the parents were sitting, and someone was working with a small child showing them how to swim. Then you go through the door, and outside that door was basically the competition pool. So it was the eight-lane pool. Um, what Melissa Troop had indicated is when they came there for a competitive swim, you would go to the back of the community center and come in those doors for the competition pool. So when the schools utilized it for swimming, when they had competitive swimming, it didn't interrupt with any of the other activities that were going on in the regular pool. They had separate dressing rooms in that area as versus the dressing rooms in the other area. So there was 
anybody that walked into the community center saw the community center in the pool that was available for the community. They didn't have to walk through a competitive swim situation to utilize the community center. It's inside. It is inside. Um, so we looked at that, and like I said, that was probably the most attractive to the committee, just basically because of the way it was set up. Coming back, we gave it a week, and our committee came back together and met, and what we talked about is, based on what we had seen for those that had been on the benchmarking trip, from the individuals who had gotten input from community, what they thought would be good for us to put in a community center with an aquatic center here in Conway. So from that meeting, what we came up with is an indoor and outdoor. They wanted the flow outside either through doors or some type of connectivity and on the outside to have a splash pad, a slide, and a lazy river. Um, they did like the idea of the library in the active senior area, eight lanes for competition with diving boards, of course a pool for recreational swimming and swimming lessons. They said that Benton has a facility that has the balcony seating, so rather than having big areas on either side to have your seating up top to save some room to do maybe a balcony seating like Benton has, a separate entrance for the uh, swim teams, also party rooms. One of the things that Pine Bluff noted as well as Bentonville and Clarksville is that people book those things to have birthday parties. So that's actually uh, a revenue generator. And then, of course, to do some outside shade and pavilions for the activities that you have outside, to maybe do a weight room just on a small scale, and then a zero entrance for special needs children. Uh, they did mention maybe a basketball court that could be converted to do volleyball or, of course, pickleball concessions and also the lockers and to make sure that there was plenty of storage. And in looking at some of the revenue generators we had talked about is um, membership and we did get the information from Pine Bluff on their membership and we also picked up a lot of information from Bentonville on some of the classes that they offered, what those fees were. Of course parties, swim meets, uh, rent from the swim teams, sponsorship, swim lessons or program cost if you ran programs, what people would pay for those, the room rentals, the concessions, and one of the things with Bentonville that we noted is the Bentonville School uh, donated a million dollars to the facility when they built the facility. And um, what they had told us is even though they donated the million dollars, it still did not give them any priority over any of the other needs there in the community center. And then they also said that they get uh, $10,000 a year from the swim teams. And... Um, I did also, Shelly had talked to me earlier this morning, and she had basically asked me about the local swim teams that we have, so I did get that information. Uh, Conway High has 50, Crocs has 75, Aqua Kids um, post-COVID was 125, so that's 250, and then Valonia also has 20 that uh, participate in SWIM. And then of course, uh, the other things that our committee talked about was the other parks and recreational needs, which would be soccer fields, indoor tennis, and then the mountain bike trails. Well, who did you say had 75? Had 75, the Crocs. The Crocs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the Crocs. Sheila, I have a couple questions for you. Sure. I know you mentioned that Pine Bluff had a sponsorship or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
or do any of the other aquatic centers y'all visit have sponsorships from any? They entities? did not mention sponsorships. Like um, Bentonville didn't from Walmart They did or not anybody? mention. Oh, I'm okay. sure they got yes, they a did. substantial Some amount kind of, of money from Walmart and other areas. Uh, other Tyson, yes. Some of those areas. Mm -hmm. And also, did they all have lifeguards on duty? At when all we facilities? went to Pine Bluff, Pine Bluff had a lifeguard, and we thought this was real interesting. They had two lifeguards, and one of the lifeguards, when we pulled up there, was outside picking up trash on the parking lot. And the other lifeguard, um, the other lifeguard was cleaning around the pool. While we were there during the tour, there was a lady that had got dressed, came out and got in the pool. And observing, it was kind of neat because the minute that lifeguard saw her, go and get in the pool that lifeguard left whatever she was doing cleaning and went to her station while that person was in the water uh, they did have the lifeguards at clarksville uh, we did see there was no one in the competition pool at bentonville but there was someone in the pool that evidently was just doing swimming lessons there did y'all talk about a beachfront entrance going we did too. we did not talk about a beachfront entrance no did you get information and about how the the competition pool can be used for recreational things i mean is it is it used all the time for the swim teams no swim it's meets? not used all so, the time so it could be yes. open for Yes. like lap swimming, which yes, I know a lot of could. people like to do. Right. Okay. And the other thing that Bentonville provided us with is they gave us all of their information for 2019, like their attendance, their average daily attendance, the staff expenditures, the facility revenue, um, the programming revenue, what their utility costs were. So, yes. Well, didn't have insurance in here, but um, it talked about the revenue that came in, of course, from the memberships, the day pass revenue, the party room revenue, community room revenue, uh, total facility revenue, total facility expense. So we did get that uh, from Bentonville. And I, I would assume there's still a gap. Yes. Between the, yes. Anybody and we know that, that so. yeah. Anybody that we talked to said that typically your pools are not going to make you money. Sometimes it's not even necessarily a break even. It's just a service that you provide. Hey Sheila, on the competitive pools, did they mm -hmm. say typically the depthness of those are they seven feet deep or? They that's what I, did not to me. say the depth. Um, I will say that um, Jamie did put out RFQs. When she put out the RFQs, she got back, I think it was 40 some odd. But then I think what happens when you put out the RFQs, your architects get with a design team. So then it brings those numbers down. Um, I have not talked to Jamie yet to find out exactly how many, but it has been um, on all of the ones that we visited. We did find out who their architects were, and we have gotten uh, information back from basically everyone that has done that. The thing that we did find out in visiting the facilities is they were like, man, y'all are doing the great thing, coming around looking. Um, because you don't want to just build something. And it's like what they said is if you look at the way the facilities are being built, you can see the improvements that are occurring with each one that's built later on. Okay, I'm going to be the fly in the ointment. I know y'all expect this anyway. Yeah, but anyway, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my thing about this, this whole situation. Uh, we are talking about all the amenities and competitive and all this, which is great. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, we talk about people can go get in their neighbor's pool and all this. There's so many people can't get in a pool. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to get to, a pool that they can get in. I understand swim team, and all this and that. And we have never been able to go to a pool, never. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people that's not, I'm, I'm not criticizing, that hadn't answered the survey or nothing, 
that wants to get in a pool. They, can't, they don't have a neighbor's house they can go to. They can't go to come here reason they can't afford it. I'm trying to get a pool that everybody can go to, just not for the schools and competition. Kids like around here would like to go to a pool. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand all these amenities, but they can't play in nothing but the little inflated pool. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of those kids, kids not on the survey that I talk to that would love to go to a pool. Mm -hmm. So you think like a five foot deep pool? No, no, I'm, like what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is, let's, when we build a pool, let's keep that in mind, not the people, right. not the other people in mind. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's people, we have never been able to go to a pool. Mm -hmm. I'm 72 years old. We've never been able to go to a pool. No, well, I, learned, I learned to swim in Beaver Park Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And I don't have a neighbor that I can go get in their pool. Mm -hmm. And the people on the survey, they got that, but the people that's, that you talk to can't do that. I'm not saying we need a wading pool, but let's build a pool that, that Joe Blow can go to. See what I'm saying? Let's, let's do that for once, okay? That, that we will charge to go to? Yeah, but let's mm -hmm. don't make it so pricey to do mm -hmm. this, all this other stuff that they can't go to the pool. Right. See what I'm saying? You had all these amenities, you're going to have it where the people just want to go swim that's never swam before, can't afford to. I know we get, the way I feel about it, we get one shot at this, and we, we need to try to make sure we, we appease most of the people. I know it won't be all of them, but we, we won't get another opportunity to do this again, probably, and we need to make sure we include everybody, you know, as many as we can get in there um, with what we're doing, and I think this is a good starting point to make sure that we we capture everything for everybody that we can. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying let's not forget what this is about. The people that I talk to and I've been talking to can't go to the neighbor's pool because there is not one. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people would love to take swimming lessons, but there's nowhere to go. And if they pay to go to the swimming lesson, they can't pay to get in the pool. And that's why I said you start having all these other stuff with it, you got the price so high that only the people that can go to the neighbor's pool can go to it. Yeah. Well, I will say. I will say, Theo, um, one of the particular members on our committee, um, we were kind of discussing everything one day, and this kind of brought it all to heart for me. Uh, what she said is, is she grew up in a community where they did have a pool. And what she saw was that you had people who came together at the pool from all different races, all different religious backgrounds, all different community areas, and they came together at the pool. And I think that's what really brought it to home for me because, you know, of course, this is someone who could have probably afforded to go wherever. But, you know, their concern was having something to offer to the community where you could bring everybody together in a common area. There's the mother who has three kids that can't afford to take all three of her kids to Wild River Country. Um, you know, things of that nature. I do, un I, no matter what we build and what amenities we have with it, there's going to have to be some kind of cost to cover. We did get the cost from Pine Bluff, um, which are very reasonable. So I do think that is something that we are going to have to keep in mind going forward, that this is gonna, and I think that's why I've never used the term aquatic center. Basically what I have said is a community center that will house an aquatic center because that's what I see it as, a community center, to bring people together. And I think with some of the other amenities that you offer, Swimming is great, but then I think, you know, for the people who live on this side of town that don't have a way to get over to the library, if they can come here and check out a library book at this facility, or if they can come here and get CPR classes, things that they don't have to drive all the way across town for, to me, that's what a community is. I, apolog I apologize for being late. I, mm -hmm. may, I may miss some of this. And I... I I tend to be more in line with what Theo's saying. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not opposed to building what, what we can build, but when you described people coming together 
Mm -hmm. That didn't sound to me like a competition pool. <clears throat> that sounded to me like a place where people come together to swim <clears throat> and do their thing. Um, again, I'm not against building what we can build, and I'm, right. I'm, I've got no preconceived notions here, but the more we pack into there, the more square footage for libraries and mm -hmm. CPR classes, that's more fair square footage we got to cover each month operationally. Mm -hmm. And we saw the preliminary studies on this thing. It, it's not cheap. No. It's not, and you know, it has to be affordable to the people going, mm -hmm. either daily or monthly memberships. Mm -hmm. It's got to be affordable to us. It can't break our budget. Right. Okay. Now, again, I, I don't, I don't necessarily care where we end up. We do have one shot at it, Mary, but I think we need to make make a good decision overall. You know, here, here here's an anecdotal story. It's just one story that hit me just this past Sunday. At church, it was Senior Sunday, and they had one of the young ladies um, stand up and talk about you know being a senior. And she said that she moved here in fourth grade and started going to church there. And the point was that, you know, mm -hmm. church helped her meet people and make friends and blah, blah, blah. But here's exactly what she said. She said, we moved here in the summer. It was the hottest summer record. And there were no <laughs> public pools. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, okay. She didn't say, I want to come in December and swim inside when it's cold or yeah. join the swim team. She goes, mm -hmm. it was hot. I want to swim. I want to mm -hmm. swim pool. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I think so. we need to focus mm -hmm. on that. I mean, uh, before well, I guess we yeah. just have to decide. Do we want competitive? Do we not want competitive? Because if a majority of us feel like we don't, then take that off the table. Well, I mean, I and no, let's again, make it. Like, and maybe this is next. Architectural design team, what, what are they going to design? What they, what they will do is they will take the information that this council sends to them. What I brought was the suggestions that came from the committee. So what we will do is we will then take the suggestions of what we want to see. Um, Felicia said this process will be a lot like when they were looking at the emergency shelter. You can say we want this, 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 and this. But then they come back and they say, well, can you live? It's kind of like anything else. When you're shopping for a house, you have a budget that you're going to spend on the house. You look at it and... You know, the wife says, well, I want the mega kitchen, I want this, and then when you look at what all that costs, it's way outside of the budget. So then you have to reel back in and start cutting things. So from my understanding, that's what, and the architects basically have all done designs with pools. So basically when we tell them what we want or what we're looking at putting in this facility, then they can reel us in and say, well, you know, you can't do this. You know, this is what you could do. Um, yeah. So it, that's kind of. It, we, we have, in the bond issue, available to us enough money to pretty much build any kind of aquatic community center we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, we really do. Mm -hmm. The question is, can we afford to keep doing it year after year after mm -hmm. year? To me, this almost seems like the quorum courts issue, the animal shelter. They've got money to build an animal shelter question is how they fund it going on mm -hmm. an annual basis, okay? Mm -hmm. So, again, I, I don't care what we build as long as we can sustain it without breaking our budget. Right. And, and, and it can be affordable to the masses. Yes. yes. Affordable right. masses. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's another thing. You know, to me, a, a community swimming pool is an outdoor swimming pool where <clears throat> moms are laying on recliners and the kids go to the concession stand, get them something, mm -hmm. they're, they're right here, teenagers mm -hmm. are on the other end. You have, mm -hmm. you have baby pools, you Hot might have days. a lazy river, you might, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How many of these facilities had retractable roofs, Sheila? I think. Was it just, was it just one or was I it? I think there was just one. Just well, one. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where, this is where the design people mm -hmm. and the architects will be of the most importance of this entire project. They're gonna be the most important people here because they will be able to show us mm -hmm. what it is that makes the most sense. Uh, I swim at Hendrix on, on a fairly regular basis. I hadn't been in a week, but I swim there regularly. Uh, there's no air conditioning. You don't need air conditioning because you have a retractable roof. Mm -hmm. So right. in the summer, right. you have summertime conditions. Mm -hmm. In the winter, you close that roof up You've got heat pumped in, but you mm -hmm. don't have to air condition that area. So, I mean, these people know stuff exactly. like that. And, and so they know where they can cut costs.
cost where they don't have to put mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, air conditioning in and where they have to put pool decks in and how those pool decks have to be structured. So, the, I mean, we can sit here all day, but the most important people in this process mm -hmm. are going to be the folks that are going to design it, which leads me to my next question. How's that going to be done? How are we going to choose that firm or firms? Jamie has sent out RFPs. I'm sure mm -hmm. she'll have a report for you guys to take a look at to make your decision. And sh okay, so it's going to be turned to us then to do that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mayor, do we I still have, have the? Do we mm -hmm. sell the drawings from from? We do. Years uh, ago? I think Steve Ibbotson has those. I mean, if y'all like you know, to see. And them. the thing is, drawing up the plans, we don't really know how much like a competitive pool component would be. I mean, that's the thing. I don't know. I mean, we've got to decide that up front. Is that what we have to do before they draw them up? Well, well your going architects going to, are going to know. Okay, yeah. they'll know. Yeah, Mr. Jones, an answer to Mr. Jones, an answer to one of your questions from earlier today. If you build the pool properly, and you put what's called a bulkhead in in the middle of the pool, you can cut it in a couple of different pieces where you can still have competitive swimming on one end, and have that and have that swimming area where people can learn uh, to swim on the, on that other end. I, and, I and no, and, and, and never the two. Can I can I say I something? Else? I'm not saying. You don't need to uh, have something that you can swim competitively in. Yeah. What I'm saying is, let's not lose sight of mm -hmm. what what it's about. I mean, we don't want to have it uh, build a pool that only somebody can use is for competitive swimming. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We got yeah. it's, it's people would just love to go to a pool, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, if, and if we get so much uh, tied into the competitiveness. We might as well not build a pool for the people that can get in it. You might as well just build a pool for that. See, oh, in your perfect this, world, what uh, are you? This looks more fun to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Which one is that? Which one is that? Which one is that? Which one is that? With the slide. The outdoor. <laughs> See, that's what, I, that's what I liked about Clarksville mm -hmm. because they had one like a uh, wild river country mm -hmm. outside and the pool inside. See, the kids yes. could be out there playing mm -hmm. in the wild river country thing. Kids want. People want to get in a pool ride. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, people like me. Nobody wants to go in the summer and get in a pool. No, that's perfect. Well, Con yeah. Conway is still a, uh, I mean, everybody knows that we're a university town. We have three mm -hmm. different school districts. When the college adults go back to school and when the high school and junior high and elementary kids go back to school, they get interested in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the competitive swimmers in those groups will, will be, still be swimming, but the majority of them will not. And, uh, Miss Isby and I, when mm -hmm. we first started talking about this, though, I think, and, and the, uh, Mr. Ledbetter's wife is on the committee too, I think everyone realizes that the first priority mm -hmm. on this is, is recreation. Yes. And I think it may be why Miss Smith said something about the beach, because that way you start out shallow and you, mm -hmm. you can go deeper. Yeah, the little ones can get right. in it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To several pools there, and most all of them have the beachfront. They have the slides. They have the mm -hmm. splat. You know, they have the the dumping thing in there. I mean, it's it's and they have the little rope thing climb. A lot of activities in their right. pools mm -hmm. that I would love to see built mm -hmm. into these because the kids, my grandkids, the other ones love to go to Texas to play in their pools mm -hmm. because they're not like the pools around here. They're because it's so hot down here. It's another reason why there's so many pools, but are there's so many city pools there that are great. So, are you going to go down the slide, Mr. Grimes? I just want. To, all right. <laughs> well, Karen Ledbetter and I said we're going to take swimming lessons. So. <laughs> and I know, uh, I know that there's a lot of folks out there uh, in the soccer world because uh, I think I've been contacted by about 25 today and you're listening um, and this is not set in stone but mm -hmm. I, I think and I can't speak for the entire council but I, there's a good possibility that if we use the money on the aquatic center then the city will be able to take out a five-year loan pending this council's approval mm -hmm. a five-year loan for the for the soccer facilities what so. about for the um, tennis facility? That's Will that go with this bond issue? That's what we got. That's what we. That's what this group has to figure out. Yeah. Just got a brand new tennis facility. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to. That one needs to be put on the back burner as opposed to you know the soccer complex is is absolutely terrible. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, soccer has got to be. Yeah. I agree. They do grow. They do grow champion mosquitoes, though. Right. That's, what, that's the issue. Out there. So it is the issue. Out there. And then see what's left. So we have to pick a design team next, I guess, is that kind of the next step? And then yeah. clearly communicate them our pr priority list. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully they can design something. If we say, okay, that's too much, what can we take out? Yeah. You know, and work our way up from the bottom. Yeah. Exactly. Are, are we tied into that one location? No, it's the reason we're looking at that location is because we own the land mm -hmm. and we've got the parking area. The uh, other possibility would be Central Landing. Um, I would love to see it at Central Landing and let me tell you why, um, if, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to see it there because there still are rumblings out there about a live performance venue uh, that might end up in Conway. And you could use the same <coughs> parking lot for both of those facilities. If you had a live performance venue, mm -hmm. you have a parking lot, you have a swimming complex or a, uh, an aquatic center or a, a, a center that houses an aquatics, whatever you want to call it, you could have all of that in one spot <coughs> and, and uh, it, it is more centrally located mm -hmm. uh, where everybody could get to it. They could ride bicycles to it, and I just and the infrastructure has yeah. already been updated. Yeah. And we own forty acres there. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's another and that's another mm -hmm. good thing. Yeah, and that's yeah. most important. I mean, think about how many people go up and down like the, the bike trail if we had a yeah. whole fun. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that you could get to. Oh, that you could just well, you could get to. Oh, I don't think there's a better centrally located place. I, I mean, just you, get, you can come from <clears throat> east side of town. You can come down Saber Morgan to Ingram. You can. Absolutely. Easy in and out. Absolutely. Mayor, can we have some of these, like the ball teams that are at the girls' complex and the boys' complex, can they do a day pass to come if their parents, you know, or if they're spending the night, can they come and I don't know if she went in. Have y'all looked into that? She loaned. We did get some rates. Um, what The one thing that they did tell us, particularly in Rogers, is that they try not to police people who are Rogers residents or other areas. But yes, most of them do have like day passes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we would love to have done mm -hmm. that after the ball games were over for the afternoon and do that if you're spending the night anyway. Mm -hmm. And what, as far as... Yeah, what were some of the hours of operation and months of operation? Like the, the one that was all outdoor, and I'm not necessarily leaning that I way, but did... Don't... Because I think, think you could start yeah. it pretty early. Right, yeah. <laughs> We did not get information from them on their actual hours mm -hmm. of operation. Um, the other thing that they had in at Rogers is outside of their facility, they had a beach volleyball set up out there. And then there were also people walking along the trails while we were there as well. Yeah, I just think of hot evenings. Mm -hmm. Where's Rogers? Where's their facility? Mm, I'm not. It's. It's pretty much kind of in somewhat of the downtown area, but not direct downtown. Is it by that bike park, that rail yard park? Or is my I don't recall seeing the rail yard park. A, um, few, a few people have mentioned to me they would like to see water like rubbings. Address. You know, a class of water rubbings yeah. out there, which doesn't need to be super deep. I mean, five feet, four feet. But, you know, I think we would attract a group of people that would want to exercise at that facility like that as well. But well, that would be indoor. Yeah, and I know. think if we had an indoor component, you, you do have people who just like to swim for exercise right. and you could still have recreation in there and you could do some of this programming, mm -hmm. the swim lessons. Sure. Where you is know, that 40 located at? You know where the uh, Axion building is, Mark? Mm -hmm. it's, it's that 40 that surrounds that. And West, That's what the I've been actual, told we're talking. Don't, don't hold me to that. The address of the Aquatic Center in Rogers is 1707 South 26th Street. You know where that is. <laughs> 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 
If you were riding your bike, you put a probably seen the signage because they have all of the signage that points to all of the different amenities. Yes. Yeah, just really making sure it's it's open, mm -hmm. it, yeah. you know, and open when families really need it. Council, we have a couple of people that have some questions online. Is that correct? Okay. And I don't know that we're ready for a lot of public input just tonight because we're at ground zero right here. Um, but if we can hold it to a couple tonight, uh, Mr. Knight, that might be good. Mm -hmm. And we may not have answers for their questions, but well, that's, that's fine. While we're trying to set that up, um, just kudos to Felicia and Sheila for putting this together because it this exactly helps just kind of visualize it for me anyways, what I, our options might look like. I couldn't mm -hmm. get anyone to tell on anybody else, but I think they had a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, Chris, are you online? Yes, sir. Okay, what's your question, please, sir? Uh, regarding uh, the, the soccer facility being a part or not a part of this, um, I just wanted to know if you guys were aware that even in a COVID year, we've got about 600 kids playing soccer in Conway, mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. one tournament alone. Um, generates about $1.3 million in revenue. Um, North Little Rock told us that in the last few years with four can tournaments canceled, they lost about $5 million in revenue from Burns Park being closed. Um, and so just wanted to know if you guys were aware of that as, uh, as these discussions were happening. Uh, yes, we are, uh, Chris. And uh, you may not have heard uh, earlier when, when I was talking about the soccer, what I think the council uh, is willing to do, and I can't speak for all of them, but we've not – Put it to a vote but i think the council understands the uh, economic impact mm -hmm. that soccer will have in conway and i think even if we do not put it in on the swimming pool we will we will do a five-year uh loan on it and that we could actually vote on that before we even move forward with the pool i don't know that the council will be willing to do that because uh, we have to do a lot of research there as well mm -hmm. but we are very aware of uh, what soccer what an impact it would be for us we've got uh Three possible locations, one, of course, being the Farber Lane uh, property, one being uh, Central Landing, and the third one is the uh, property that the uh, Human Development Center is willing to, uh, 60 acres there that they're willing to uh, work with us on. So so don't think that uh, soccer is not front and center on this. You guys are. It just may be two separate. We, the funding may be done separately. Is that fair, Council? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and I think that he raises a really good point, and that's why I was asking about, you know, how many how many participants do we have in competitive swimming and I knew soccer was going to be a lot mm -hmm. higher and so we really right. kind of have to look at mm -hmm. you know how many people will be served what mm -hmm. kind of programming can we do and offer and I think I know Mark and I talked about this just now I think I think these programs need to be back under the city umbrella not out farmed out to different entities. Uh, I would agree because we're missing the boat on a lot of revenue I would agree that we're not making so was that does that answer your question Chris Okay. Okay, Kimberly, are you up? Hello, Kimberly. Okay. Bart, I have gotten just a few. Um, Felicia did say that the operating months um, would be April through October is basically what Rogers does with their outside facility. And then I just got a comment um, from someone that just said that there are revenue opportunities for a competition pool as well. So, okay. All right. thank you. Ms. Hill. And putting that, as Ron pointed out to me, over near, nearer the hotels and motels, mm -hmm. where people would come in to mm -hmm. drink from and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Council, I've got. Y'all have any more questions for Miss Hisby or for myself? 
Well, this is our first step tonight, mm -hmm. and for you folks that, are, that have joined us uh, via Zoom, uh, you have a group of folks here that, that are uh, most dedicated completely to, to doing something really great for Conway uh, in several areas. We are just starting, so be patient with us, but uh, you will be hearing back from us. Uh, I think Miss Isby's ready to go, and you'll start hearing more and more about this. Hopefully we can spin something mm -hmm. up here in the very near future and, uh, and bring it to the people. Is that fair, Miss Isby? That is fair, yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Could we get our hands on uh, Ms. Bryce's information as soon as she has it available? Yes, I will. I'll, I'll call Jamie. I'll, call, I'll talk to Jamie tomorrow. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank Could you. Could you get us a uh, layout of the property over there? In yes, I can get you that. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get those two things. What, what, what we have before? Yeah. I got yeah. a question for Ms. Smith. Can you do a rough weeks in a five foot pool? No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I will say for any of you council members that want it, I do have the um, 2019 data for Bentonville that um, I'll be welcome to share with any of you. Thank you for all this information, Ms. Isby. Is mm -hmm. You did a good job. All right, council, let's take about eight minutes and we'll start our council meeting. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>